Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna take a look at the November 2018 Smart Art Box and create a project with the supplies inside. Now I have to confess, I took a peek at this box when it came in and I was a little stymied as to what to do with these supplies, but together I think we can come up with something. If you are curious about Smart Art, you can click the link in the video description or visit smartartbox.com and you can subscribe and get a surprise, a box of our supplies delivered to your door every month. They have different options, so uh, check it out if you are curious and they ship to many countries worldwide. So in this month's box we have a brochure as always and what the brochure is is um, it gives you some art history, it gives you uh, kind of the background and the history of the techniques you're going to learn and the supplies you're going to use and uh, it goes into every product that's in the box so you know exactly what to use it for. It usually features an artist which is really nice if you do homeschool art and you're looking for um, something to supplement the art education part of your homeschooling and if you're just curious about trying new materials it's also good for that. And then on the back of each brochure there is a project for you to do using only the supplies that are in the box. So you get the supplies, you get a mini class, and um, then you can determine after that whether that's a uh, art form that you want to go into further and then you could always add to your collection um, if it's something you really enjoy and if it's something you didn't really like then you can pass it along and wait for the next box to see if that hits the mark with you. So just kind of a nice way to try different supplies. So this month we have an arrangement of oil painting supplies. Um, the first thing that we have here is a number four filbert synthetic long handled brush from the snap line. And uh, usually if you have a long handled brush that's because you're intended to use that at an easel. I'll be sitting at my table today just because it's easier for me to film but uh, generally your long handled brushes are for easel work. Uh, we have four colors of Sennelier oil paint. This is the Reeve gouache uh, line, which is an oil paint, not a gouache, even though it says gouache, it, I think it just means matte. All right, it's a faster drying, solvent-free oil paint, I do believe. I've never used it before. And the colors is what had me stymied because we have a white, which is great. You go through tons of white with oil paints. Um, then there was a green, a hooker's green. Uh, there's a cad yellow medium, which is a kind of a warmish yellow, uh, neutral to warm yellow. And there's a cobalt blue, which is a warm blue. So the reason I was so... I don't know if worries the, worries the right idea. I was like, what am I going to do with this? Because um, generally when you're mixing warmer colors, you get muddier colors. So these two colors wouldn't have made a great green. So I could see why they added green, but not having a red or a reddish brown or something to kind of um, complement the colors, be the opposite so you can temper them and mix. Uh, it's going to, um, I'm afraid I might end up with kind of a one-dimensional painting. And I have to say, I was debating for the last two, three weeks since I've had this box, I've been debating, do I add a tube of red from a past smart Art kit. It's been a couple years since they've done oils in a smart art kit from what I can remember. Uh, so I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to alienate the people that only get their supplies from Smart Art Box. Then I realized they recently did oil pastels, so I will use oil pastels to sketch my design and I can snag a little bit of color from that as well. Oil pastels are also very affordable. You can find them um, in pretty much any department store or art store for a couple of dollars. And if you don't have any and you have children, your kids probably have them from an art kit. So I figured that would be the uh, uh, the most thoughtful way to do that so I wouldn't be leaving anybody out. Now there's also a green for oil medium which uh, it's a it's a solvent from what I gather from the the brochure because I did read ahead on this because I've never used this or heard of it um, and it's supposed to dilute your color and it's also supposed to um, help it uh, help it dry quicker so and I guess you could use this to clean your brush but I always have a tank of uh, brush cleaner here uh, odorless mineral spirits. Um, I always have this right next to my desk, so I'm just going to go ahead and use that. And then as far as our surfaces, you have two value series ampersand art panels, and they are smooth for oil and acrylics. Um, and the smooth finish will allow you to use less uh, solvent, I'm mean, sorry, less paint as you're working because it won't hold as much paint. It's going to allow you to work in thinner layers and allow the paint to glide and um, and it should be a fairly straightforward process. So what I'm going to do is um, get set up and then we're going to paint a succulent plant together. Those are popular. I think they'd be cute in anybody's home and we can do it with these colors. I've set up my supplies by putting a ceramic dish out and I've put my paint 
on the dish so that I have two puddles of white and then I've got my three main colors and I have my medium in the middle. This does have a slight odor to it, so people that are uh, bothered by um, by the sense of chemicals may not um, do well with this product. I don't think it's very strong, but uh, the chemical smells don't tend to bother me too badly. We're going to start off sketching, and uh, I you'll usually use a brown or a, um, a yellow ochre to sketch. I also have a red here just because there's so much green. I feel like I'm going to need that just for a little bit of visual punch. And I'm going to scoot that over just a little bit so I don't get my hand in it. Um, I'm going to start by, uh, this is um, a photo on Unsplash by Scott Webb, and I will link it up below. Ooh, this is a very slick... Um, slick type of board. It's kind of kind of interesting. And this photo, the pot, is kind of, it's a pot with a succulent in it and the pot is kind of offset. And I'll probably put that up on screen too so you can see that. So there's the pot and um, I think I'm actually going to draw the, the uh, leaves of the aloe with the yellow ochre. It's not an aloe, it's a succulent. They've got kind of this one, um, I'm not sure what plant it is. It's got rounded leaves that come to a little bit of a point. But I thought it'd be kind of fun because how uh, succulents have really thick leaves. I like to let things go off the page. I thought this offset design would be really... Um, would be really fun and with a limited supply thing it would uh it would work really really well and I think I want to make that a little bit bigger and kind of come in front of that and the the tips of each of these have a, just a little smidgen of the red so I'm going to go up to the tip of each of these and put that in I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything to the background I guess it'll probably depend on if I mess it up or not um, but hopefully not because it's it's pretty much white in the reference photo and um, and again being limited in colors I don't want to uh, I don't want to introduce too much so there we have our sketch we may come back to these as far as color toning but we might not have to that might be enough just with that sketch there and I'm gonna start by um, mixing up some color um, I tend to work dark to light with oils because the white is so strong that it gobbles stuff up really easily so as I am picking up some of this this uh, blue, I can feel that it's got quite a bit of drag to it. So I'm going to add a little bit of that medium, then I'm going to add a little bit of green to that. That's going to be a nice dark green. And I'm going to go in and put that everywhere I see my darker green. And you just want to kind of use the reference photo as a guide, which you can download. The, there'll be a link in the video description for you. And just go in and put in all those darker colors at the bottom of each of each um, leaf here. I think I could have that a little bit darker even. Now to clean your palette when you're done, all you're going to do is wipe off what you can with a paper towel. And um, then you'll want to go with like a soap and water and just kind of wash it off. Or you can wipe it out with some... Uh, odorless mineral spirits. I noticed there was one more little petal in here and I thought it was pretty cute and interesting so I'm gonna go ahead and just sketch that in and then maybe make this one come out a little bit more. Oils are very forgiving so if you see something you want to change go ahead and change it. There see I just turned that one petal into two. Now I am going to clean my brush off and I am going to use my uh, jar of solvent and I'm going to wipe my brush off. If you have extra brushes, you can just grab a new brush. And I'm just going to get the, the majority of that paint out of there. Now I am going to take some of that green and a little of that mixed color and add some yellow to it. I should have grabbed the yellow first though so I didn't contaminate, but I think we're going to use that all up. I don't, I don't think it's uh, anything we have to worry about. And I'm going to add that next to these darker shadows that I had put in. I'm not blending anything yet, I'm just kind of blocking in colors at this point. Okay, I'm going to clean my brush again, and this time I am going to add some white to that color I just made, and a little bit more blue to cool it down. So wipe off as much paint from your brush as you can, and I grab some white, and some more yellow, and actually a little bit more blue into that color we've been using. 
And see, we're going to get kind of like a um, celery or sagey green color. And then we are going to kind of go around the edges of each of these because the edges of these are much lighter. The way they round, the, the edges of the petals kind of round off, it, and it catches the light and it gives you that kind of softer, lighter area on the edge. And um, you probably won't really need to add any of that solvent just because if you're working on a really slick surface like this, it probably is not going to need it because your paint's going to glide really well. But if you're working on a stretch canvas, um, maybe you're doing this with the supplies you have at home, you just like this painting, that's totally fine. My tutorials are for everyone, whether you subscribe to Smart Art or not. These Smart Art tutorials can be used with whatever products you have at home. Um, uh, you might want a little solvent just to help your paint glide because the texture of the canvas will want to grab it a little bit more. Okay, we've got another, we've got a little one right there. Okay, so we've got our we've got our colors and values blocked in. We just haven't blended yet. And um, what I'm going to do is actually I know typically what I would do is I would just go grab a clean dry brush and I would do my blending. But since um, I want to try to keep this to what you would be getting in the box, I'm going to see if I can do that with this brush here just by cleaning it really well in my solvent and then wiping off all the extra. I'm getting it back to white pretty well, so hopefully I can feels pretty dry um, and I'm just going to keep a towel handy I'm gonna blend a color wipe it off blend the color wipe it off and kinda of go that way so I also want to bring that make sure that red gets integrated there wipe off I really think I'm gonna need to go with a dry brush But we'll give it a we'll give it a try for a bit, and then if it's frustrating, I will just grab a dry brush. I feel like I'm just I, I think because the solvent in this brush is just taking off everything that I've put on. So I could have put a little more white back in there. And so I mean, if you're doing this and you only have this brush, what you could do is block everything in, clean your brush really well, dry it off as best you can, and then let it air dry. And a couple hours later, after it's all dry, it won't take long then uh, come back and blend. Generally after I wa when I'm done painting for the day, I wash it in the thinner, wipe it off, then I wash it in soap and water. Um, so that does take some time to dry. That's really what I recommend doing. But um, that's not always possible. So I'm gonna try blending with this dry brush here. This is a black swan from Jerry's Artorama. Made by Creative Mark. It's a part of the, it's a faux red squirrel for oils. It's beautiful, I love it. I'm going to try blending the lights first and then wiping my brush and blending the darks, but not adding any, any solvent. You will need to wipe your brush off as you get build up on it. And because it's such a slick surface, it's, uh, colors will want to mix together really easily. Oh, I like the blend I got on that one a lot. It's probably also a good idea to wear a smock. And I'm blending back to front because I know I can, I can, uh, if I have a little messiness at the end of a leaf, it doesn't matter because there'll be one overlapping it. And then I still will have to deal with the bottoms of these leaves. I've been trying to avoid the darker color up until now. Okay, now for the darker color, I'll start at the bottom and blend up. I added a little bit of that medium to the darker color. I wish I hadn't because I feel like it's making it kind of uh, streaky. So you need a very soft brush to blend with this to avoid the streaks. And don't worry, we can sharpen up edges as we go. Okay, we've blended all of the petals, um, and everything is relatively smooth. I mean, I do have a little bit of streakiness here and there because I added that solvent, so I would probably recommend that you don't add that solvent 
uh, unless you're working on a, a, a actual canvas because on a panel it just makes everything feel way too greasy and I'm gonna let that set up a bit while we work on the pot and on the pot I have a feeling that we are gonna need a little bit of help so I'm just gonna grab this brown um, oil pastel and I am going to tone it a little bit because I want to I'm gonna be using blue on this but this should really be kind of like a gray color so if I add some of this uh, burnt sienna to my uh, board, it's going to just kind of turn into a little bit of a gray. I'm going to clean my brush. Actually, let's go back to the uh, to the one that came in the kit and grab some blue on its own. And just kind of start. Oh, that is. See how bright that is. We got to see. We got to knock it down a little bit with that oil pastel. I kind of wish I had a stiffer brush. I could use solvent in that. I don't need to make this smoothly blended, so I will use some solvent in that to soften up that paint a little bit because it's really stiff. And I'm just doing a scumbling stroke here, which means I'm just kind of go doing crisscrosses. The it looks like it's in like a marble, a marble pot. Like if you if you have one of those marble mortar and pestles at home, that's what it looks like. It looks like that sort of. Uh, it looks like a vessel like that kind of, but you're just seeing the edge of it. And I might just go into some of that solvent to see if I can break down that uh, oil pastel a little bit. So, I mean, I think if you enjoy enjoy are enjoying this and you've gotten the Smarter Box, you definitely would benefit from grabbing a couple extra tubes of oil paint. Even though this is a fast drying oil paint, I really think you could take pretty much any um, any brand and add to it. I would get a burnt sienna and probably a crimson to start off with and that would really bring the enjoyment uh, up quite a bit. I'm going to scribble on my palette. Now this is not a the best oil pastel in the world. You can see how it's not wanting to dissolve really well, but it's better than nothing. It's better than uh it's better than not having anything to temper that color. It's kind of like using an oil stick when you do this. Mix it up really well. So I'm struggling with this a little bit, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but uh but I think when we're all done it's going to be fine. Uh, and I'm wondering, maybe if I dip my oil pastel in my thinner, I may be able to make myself a little bit of a little bit of paint that way. I'm just trying to scribble on this plate. This plate has no tooth, so it doesn't really want to give me any color. But we'll get something. We'll get something that we can use just to knock that color back a little bit. And then we'll add some white to it. This is kind of like how you'd use a... Um, a water soluble uh, pencil sometimes. Just take a uh, brush that's wet with solvent and um, use it to pick up color. Of course this is super transparent because of all of the solvent I've added. So hopefully the white really does its job and makes it nice and opaque. I'm just going to grab that white there, pick up some more of that grayish color. Maybe even add a little yellow because I think that might tone it down a little bit too. That yellow is pretty strong. Definitely is having a hard time graying out with these colors. We're purposely trying to make mud here. <laughs> now I'm going to try some red. I'm just going to try to dis dissolve as much of it as I can uh, with my uh, brush here. And at this point I'm thinking I might as well just grab the colors of the two paint I want because this is kind of ridiculous. And I'm just trying to uh, get some color here so that hopefully I can get rid of some of that green with this red. But I am not completely optimistic <laughs> at this point. Grab some more white. And oh, it's it's actually not oh, that's better. That is a little bit better. I feel like I might wipe out some of this color. When you're painting, you really need, I mean, a limited palette is great, but you want to make sure the colors you have in your palette are versatile. Um, so like having a red, yellow, and blue would be way more versatile than having like a red, yellow, and orange or a blue, green, and blue, and yellow because those are colors that you can make from those colors. I think I'm starting to get somewhere though, uh, so that's good. Okay, I have neutralized it a bit. It's still not exactly where I want it, where I'd want it to be, but I don't know if I can get it where I want it to be. 
with this uh, with this the colors I have available. But that's better. That's better, and I'm going to leave that as it is. And I am going to go back to our succulents here, and I am actually going to take a different brush. Now, if you saved your brushes from past kits, if you're a Smart Art subscriber, you can go back to one of those brushes. Um, I do recommend, though, if you can, to keep your brushes for specific mediums. So keep your oil brushes for oils, your acrylics for acrylics, and your watercolor paints, watercolor brushes for watercolor, uh, just to make sh make them last a little longer, and so you don't like introduce oils into your watercolors and that sort of thing. So um, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna actually gonna gonna start off with a kind of a medium sized brush. I am gonna pick up some of the blue and some of the green. And it's it's kind of kind of a dark color and I'm gonna go and enhance the darker areas of these. And I did not add extra solvent on here because I think that gave me some issues making everything just way too greasy. I'm a big fan of working with a limited palette. So if you go to the store and you say, I want to make this project, I didn't get the Smart Art box, but I'm going to go buy some supplies. Get, um, make sure you get at least a red, yellow, and blue. And I really recommend cool versions of the colors, like a crimson over a vermilion or a scarlet to start out with, because your cool colors are going to mix cleaner and be a little bit more versatile. They'll mix, they'll mix you into a better variety of colors. And then as you have the budget to um, uh, to add more colors, then you can add some of your warmer colors. I mean, because warmer colors will mix better neutrals and better warmer colors, but if you're, you know, you're on a budget and you are buying single tube colors, it'll, uh, it'll be a little bit more versatile for you. Although that said, I think you're better off um, money-wise to invest in a small set and that way you can see what colors you actually use. So if you get, even if it's an inexpensive set of like Reeves oil paints from the craft store, um, you can, you'll be able to tell whether you like it or not. And then, you know, if you use up the ultramarine blue, you can know, okay, I'll buy a bigger tube of ultramarine blue. Maybe I'll buy um, the store brand or maybe I'll buy Winton or, you know, something that is, that is, you know, in your budget and suitable for a beginner because it's non-toxic or less toxic and you know you can go from there just replacing the colors that you actually use instead of going out and buying a ton of colors and then realizing oh I never use this crazy you know very specific color I wish I had you know stuck to the I wish I had tried some out before so I would know okay and I'm gonna blend that a little bit hopefully this brush is dry enough to blend with I just want to get, I'm, I'm really annoyed with the streakiness, I just want to get, try to get rid of some of that streakiness. And if I can't get rid of the streakiness, at least I'm going to try not to have all my lines uh, linear. I'm going to try to just kind of crisscross them a little bit so I get a more subtle uh, look. Now the thing about, um, you know, white is opaque, so opaque colors do tend to blend a little bit better and look a little smoother. So using these darker colors here are going to be a little bit harder to get a full coverage because usually titanium white is added to paints for coverage or they have a naturally opaque color. And uh, usually cobalt is pretty opaque, but this is a hue, so that would be why it's not. All right, now I'm going to go in with some light, some white actually just on its own, and I'm going to trace the edges. Oops, I got too much on my brush there. I probably don't need this little of a brush. And I think uh, with oils, just like with anything else, you can decide when it's done. You might call it done when it's completely seamlessly blended. You might call it done with uh, very painterly brush strokes visible. That's, that's a personal preference. It's all about the style that you wish to paint in. As for oil brushes, I generally find either uh, hog or synthetic hog brushes to be really good for oils. Um, generally, your oil paint's a little thicker and it needs a little bit of extra oomph to be pushed around. But I also like a softer brush like these black swans, which are a synthetic squirrel, because you can blend their, you know, if you want to use a really thin down paint and do some glazes, it will give you a pretty streak-free look usually. I want to go in with my crayon 
and um, add the little tips to these flower, these little leaves. If you don't get it perfect, you can shape it with a brush so you can like move that around. Oil pastels, that's how I started oil painting actually. I was uh, in junior high, I think, and I got one of those art kits for Christmas. Oops, I just totally missed the mark on that one. Um, I got an art kit for Christmas and it had a set of oil pastels and it also came with a little, a little jug of turpenoid, which is a you know, synthetic turpentine. And, um, and it said that you could dilute the oil pastels with the turpentine and paint with it. I think it said that. I don't think I made that up on my own. And I started doing that and I really enjoyed it. So that's how I got started. Um, I think it was like a little Royal Nine Nickel kit or something. I can't quite remember, but they sell kits like that. And it worked really, uh, really well. And that's kind of how I discovered that I really enjoyed oils. I don't do oils too much nowadays because of the smell um, and I work from home. I used to have a studio where I did oils a lot, but I didn't have to worry about like, you know, fumes or anything at home. So I don't do them, do it so much anymore, although I do really enjoy it. I'm feeling like my values need to be a little bit darker on the bottoms of these petals. So I'm going in with some more. Uh, more of that cobalt blue, a little bit of green, and deepening those up. And honestly, I'm probably, I'm looking at my painting more than the reference material because I'm just, um, I'm trying to make uh, what I have here a little bit more interesting. And um, being that I'm working in a very limited palette, I just want to, I'm kind of uh, making it work for me. But that said, I'm kind of wishing that I added a couple colors of tube paints, but I didn't think that was fair. I thought it was cheating, but for whatever reason, I didn't find the oil pastels to be cheating because I knew it was still going to be quite a bit of work, and I figured probably most people have, or would be more likely to have the oil pastels. I'm fattening this one up, though. I just don't like the way it looks, so I'm fattening it up. And your painting, you can do whatever you want. If a leaf doesn't look right, if it looks awkward, you can change it. Okay, I think I want to do a little more blending um, and then add maybe some more light color to the edges, but I really feel like it needs to be blended a little bit more first. I feel like this brush um, is a little stiff for blending though, so I, I always have a, up in my office, I always have a bucket of, of, uh, of, oil brushes, acrylic brushes, and watercolor brushes, just so whatever I feel like painting I can I can do. And I'm trying really hard to keep that background white. I have a hard time with that. I usually do smudge something. Just gently brush. These are brushes are very soft, so I'm just gently brushing over. If this is a fairly big brush, but a bigger brush does a better job at blending. And I just have some paper that came in a uh, came in a package, you know, just packaging paper on my table, so I can just wipe my brush off on it. I'm ruining the moment I added thinner to those leaves, though, just because it's it wants to thin it out too much, or medium, I should say, not thinner, but that medium stuff. I really wish they gave a color instead of that. I really don't see that as very useful uh, with these other supplies. If it was a, like a more textured canvas, sure, but with this supply, I find that I find with this board it just makes it difficult. Adjusting values here, adding a little bit of that uh, darker color on that petal. And I'm also just going to take this darker color. I'm going to try to get a little, let's see how dark I can get, like right along the, the edge, the bottom. I don't think I can get too dark. That's another thing. Um, the values in this, the darkest value you have is that green. Um, you have nothing to really deepen it. And that's problematic when you're working with a limited palette. You also have to make sure that you do have colors that are kind of intense so that you can use them on their own and or mix them to get a very dark value. 
even if it's desaturated, like if you had a crimson and you had that cobalt, you could make a pretty deep purple. Or if you had the crimson and the hooker's green, you could make a pretty deep um, black. And you do need to have contrast in a painting for it to for it to work. All right, that's not looking too bad. Um, I am going to take this round. I haven't used it yet. And I'm just going to take white because it's going to mix with whatever else I have there. So I don't think I need to do anything to it. I think it's going to pick up enough color. And I don't think it's going to drag on this because it is so greasy. And I'm just going to blend it into the edges. Try to get those highlights on there. If I'm lucky I won't have to do much else. Something tells me I'm going to have to blend a little bit. If you can give the tips of the of the uh, flowers a little bit of a curve, or petals, I mean a little bit of a curve instead of a really sharp point, it'll look really succulenty. Okay, now that you've got all the leaves outlined, um, I would just try blending a little bit, just kind of working that brush back and forth in a little bit to get that softened off. You can even go back in with a little bit more light if you need to on the edge and then just blend it in. And as it picks up some of the color from the interior, it should, it should give you a fairly natural transition. Now we're painting this a la prima, which means all at once. I'm going to try to just wipe off this big brush we blended with before and just give it a gentle blend into the other colors. I feel like I'm painting on an oil slick right now, though. But that could also be that I don't paint with oils all that often. I'm a little out of practice. So, you know, for what it's worth, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blame the paint or the products for that. Okay, so I'm gonna blend it in. And then I'll just go with this big soft brush and try to integrate it a little bit better. I'm still picking up so much color underneath it's frustrating. I also feel like I could use a little more yellow in that one, so I think I might try to alter that while I'm at it. Now the nice thing about oils is that you can keep blending and keep augmenting it and, and messing with it until you have it just right. Oops. I'll grab the brush that I painted with a darker color to do my blending with sometimes. I guess if I look and I see that a, that a plant does not have that much yellow, I can go ahead and, and add it in. The little petals, I wouldn't worry too much about blending because you don't really have that much room to blend, so like that tiny one there, I would just leave as is. I'm going to go right to my big brush there because I feel like the bottom layer is starting to set up a little bit and I could probably just, there we go, just blend right into it. And then not fuss with it. As tempting as it is to fuss with it, I'm going to try not to fuss with it and move over to this one. So just having one brush for oils is not ideal. I know that brushes really can increase the price of a kit. So if you were doing this at home with this kit, I would recommend that you would, you know, grab a couple extra brushes. All right, that blend is all right. I feel like I don't have enough dark in it though. Add a little bit of dark there. I feel like I just keep end up ending up redoing processes though with this. Yeah, we're gonna blend that in. We added a little bit of yellow to that, just so I would have that depth of color. You know, you really have to look at the subtleties of these colors when you're on such a limited palette. You've got to look at the values and try to get the values as best you can. Uh, I'm going to do a little more yellow on that. 
and we'll blend these last few petals and then we'll be ready ready just to do a few highlights and call it done. Round brushes are harder to blend filberts and flats work a lot better for blending. And I'm just going to turn my brush so my highlights on, and shadows on the same side as it was for the other side. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so now everything's blended, um, but we lost a lot of the crisp highlights and that just happens. So we're going to go and put those back in. Um, I'm just going to grab some white. And if you want to add a little bit of thinner, you can because this is just going to sit on top. We're not going to blend it in. Um, by adding that gel, it will make it a little bit more transparent. So um, it won't like stand out too much if it's too, if it's too dark. And I'm just going to... Go right along the edges and just get that little crisp bit of highlight. And the gel is also gonna, you know, it's just gonna thin it out a little bit so it's not so strong, so it shouldn't be overwhelming. And actually, I think this is pretty cute. I didn't know what I was going to be able to create with this box, but um but this was pretty fun, and I would definitely um, mix, use, just put these oils with my other oil paints so I could have a little more versatility and, um, and use other colors in my stash. I'm really curious to see how long it takes for these to dry, because they're supposed to dry a lot quicker than traditional oils, so that'll be kind of fun to see. I feel like I want to blend that a little bit, so I'm just going to wipe my brush off and see if I can just gently blend that. Maybe with my flat brush, because I probably shouldn't be messing with that, but I just felt like I just wanted to have a little blend. I also really wanted to have a little bit of tip of red on each of these colors, so I'm just going to scribble off my crayon so I can make sure I don't have any. Give myself a little bit of a point here, and then I'll go in and add just a little. Little touch on the tips of those. I don't know if it helps it or not, but I just felt like it was it was needing that little burst of complementary color to make it work. So there you have it. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions about this month's box, you can also let me know in the comments below if it's about the supplies. If it's about the box subscription itself, then you would want to contact Smart Art Box. And I will put a link to their shop in the video description so you can subscribe if you want to. You never know what you're going to get. I never know what I'm going to get either. Um, my next box is coming next week, so it'll be really interesting to see what they do next time. Um, this was not one of my favorite boxes, I have to admit. Um, I was really uh, kind of confused as to what I was going to do, and it took me a while to think of something, and um, all in all, I'm, I'm happy enough with it, but I wish it was some other colors, because I do really enjoy oil painting. But hey, that's the nature of a, of a mystery box, you don't know what you're getting every month. So please leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this, and until next time, happy crafting!